Good day students, welcome to mathgodserve.com. In this clip we're going to be going over how to add and subtract rational expressions. Before we get started, let's take a look at um, two formulas that will be guiding our problem solving process for um, this presentation, okay? Alright, so the first formula is as follows. Let's say you have two fractions with non-zero denominators, a over b plus um, c over b. What this becomes is a plus c over b. Okay? Um, this is the rule for adding or subtracting fractions. So it could be plus or minus. It doesn't really matter. What this basically helps us to see is that when you're adding fractions, you keep the denominator and add or subtract the numerator. Okay? The condition that enables you to execute this operation is that the denominators must be the same. Okay? In this particular scenario, the lowest common divisor or denominator is equal to b. Okay, so whenever you're adding or subtracting fractions, the denominators must be the same in order for you to combine the numerator. All right, now let's take a look at another formula, slightly more complicated variation of this formula we have up here. Let's say we have a over b plus c over d, where um, b and d are co-prime, they don't have any common factors other than one, and they're non-zero, okay? If you have this set up, now you can't just simply combine the numerator. You have to first of all find the LCD, okay? So in this particular setup, we have to look at the denominators and see how we can convert these two fractions into equivalent fractions where the denominators are equal to the LCD. Okay? So for the first one, A over B, we're just simply going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by this um, denominator here. So we multiply it by D, top and bottom. And then the operation could either be a sum or a difference. You have the second fraction, C over D. Now you take a look at the denominator on the left you notice that you have a b here and you do not have a b here so you proceed to multiply it by b top and bottom and then um, this becomes a d over b d plus c b over you can use a commutative property of a multiplication to write this denominator as BD. Now what you notice is that the denominators are now identical. All right. Now you can combine the numerator is going to be AD plus or minus CB over BD. In this particular setup, the um, lowest common uh, divisor is equal to BD. Okay, so these are the two uh, formulas we're going to be using to um, find the sum and difference of rational expressions in this presentation. All right, let's take a look at uh, the first example, problem one. Let's uh, find the sum. So let's say we have um, 6y divided by 15x plus 7x over 10y squared. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the steps that we're going to be using to um, add these rational expressions. So uh, number one, what we're going to do first is we're going to decompose um, the fractions, decompose, and reduce if possible. Okay, reduce if possible. So you decompose the, the fractions and reduce. This enables us to simplify the problem at the onset instead of waiting till the final 
combined form to see if we can simplify um, the resulting answer. Okay, saves us time. And then after decomposing a reduction of the fractions, if possible, we are going to um, proceed to find the LCD, the, low, the least common um, denominator. After finding the LCD, we're going to go ahead and apply the formula that was stated earlier, which involves combining the numerator, either addition or subtraction, combine the numerator, and keep the denominator. Okay, so these are the steps that um, we're going to be using to find the sum here. All right, so let's start off by decomposing the numbers. Take a look at 6. 6 is a composite, so let's go ahead and decompose that. 6 can be written as 2 times 3, a product of primes. So 6y becomes 2 times 3 times the y component. And then we have that divided by the prime factor of decomposition of 15. So if you decompose your 15 into um, a product of primes, 3 goes into 15 5 times. So in the denominator, we have 3 times 5 times x plus 7 is prime. So we just write it as 7 times x. And then um, the denominator, 10y squared, 10, the coefficient there is a composite. So let's go ahead and decompose that. 2 times 5. Okay, so in the denominator, we have 2 times 5 times y times y. Okay, so let's take a look at step 1. There are two parts to that. We've decomposed the fractions. Now, is it possible to reduce any of these fractions? The question is, is there any common factors on the left fraction and the right fraction in the numerator and denominator that can be divided out? Is that possible? And the answer is yes. Take a look at the fraction on the left side. You notice that 3 is common in the numerator and denominator. So we go ahead and divide that out. If you take a look at the right side, there's nothing co um, common. So you leave that alone. OK. All right, so let's write down the reduced form of the problem. So we have 2 times y divided by um, 5 times x plus 7 times x. That numerator divided by um, 2 times 5 times y times y. All right, so the next step is to find the, lo um, the lowest common denominator. Now what we're going to do is look at the two denominators and we want to make them identical, okay? So let's look at the denominator to the left and make sure that every factor there is present in the denominator to the right. Now take a look at 5. There's a 5 here. There's a 5 there. That's excellent. But wait a minute. We have an x in the left denominator, and there are no x's in the right denominator. So to fix that discrepancy, we're going to multiply the denominator on the right with an x. So can we just alter the denominator? Can we just change a problem like this? The answer is no. In order not to change the problem, we have to convert the fraction to the right to an equivalent fraction. So Whatever you multiply to the bottom, you have to do exactly the same thing on the top. What we're doing is multiplying by 1, which is a multiplicative identity, which does not change the value of the fraction. It just changes how it looks. OK, so we have a 5 and an x on the left and 5 and an x on the right, which is excellent. Now let's take a look at the fraction on the right. We have to make sure that all the denominator factors on the right are also on the left. We see that we have two factors here and a total of five here, so we need to fix that. There's a two on the right, so we have to insert a two on the left, put on the bottom, 
and on the top. Don't forget to do that. It has to be top and bottom. All right. Um, <clears throat> what next? We have two Y's on the right side. We need two Y's on the left. So let's go ahead and put Y times Y <clears throat> and then Y times Y. And then when you're done with the process, just do a real quick check to make sure that um, your denominators are identical. Okay, so we have y, y, two y's, one, two, one, five, and an x, two y's, one, two, one, five, and an x. Excellent. So the denominators are identical. So let's go ahead and combine the terms back up. So on the top, the numerator to the left, two times two is four. We have four y to the third divided by 2 times 5 is 10, 10x y square. Okay, plus on the right side we have 7x square divided by 2 times 5, 10x y square. You notice that the denominators are now identical. In this case, the lowest common denominator is 10 x y square. Now this gives us the ability to combine the numerator. We have 4 y to the third plus 7 x square. That divided by, so we're carrying out step three now. You combine the numerator and you keep the denominator as the least, the lowest common denominator. So 10 x y square. Now a question might arise, can we still reduce further, like cancel out the y's or find the common factor with 4 and 10, like 2 and reduce? The answer is no, you cannot. The terms in the numerator are combined by plus, so you can view them as a package and you cannot divide out sums or differences, only products of factors, okay? So this is the final answer. Um, for question number one. All right, let's take a look at number two. In uh, number two, we're going to be finding the difference, okay? So let's find the difference. So let's say we have five divided by 30 mn. And then that minus 21 n over 42 n square. All right, so we're going to be implementing the same steps that we used earlier um, for problem one in this same example. So what we're going to do now is go ahead and decompose where possible and reduce. If we can, 5 is prime, so we leave 5 alone. Let's uh, take a look at the denominator, 30 mn, that's 30 is composite, so let's go ahead and decompose that into a product of primes, so 30 is even, so 2 goes into every even number, Th uh, 2 goes into 30 15 times, decompose that, 5 times 3, so the prime factor decomposition of 30 mn is 2 times 5 times 3 times m times n. Okay, now let's take a look at 21. Let's decompose that into a product of primes. That's 3 times 7. Um, so in the right numerator, we have 3 times 7 times n. Now let's take a look at the denominator on the right. We're going to go ahead and um, decompose 42, that's definitely a composite, so take out a 2 from there since it's even, 2 goes into 42 21 times, we have already decomposed 21, so we know the decomposition of 21 is 3 times 7, okay? So let's insert that in the right denominator position, so we have 2 times 3 times 7, times n times n. All right, so notice in the first step we're to decompose and reduce if possible. Okay, so take a look at the two fractions and the question is, can I reduce 
these two fractions before I start looking for the LCD? Can I make this problem a simpler problem? If you take a look at the fraction on the left, you notice that 5 is common in the numerator and the denominator, so we can divide that out. On the right side, if you notice, 3, 7, and n are common in the fraction on the right. So 3 goes here 1, 3 goes here 1, 7 goes here 1, 7 goes here 1, n goes there once, and n goes there once. Okay? All right, so let's go ahead and rewrite our simplified problem. So we have 1 divided by 2 times 3 times m times n. And then on the right side, we have 1 divided by um, 2 times n. All right, so next we're going to advance to step 2, which involves us finding the LCD. We want to make sure that the denominators are identical, okay? We have a 2 on the left and a 2 on the right, that's good. We have a 3 on the left, no 3's on the right, so we fix that by multiplying by 3, top and bottom. We have an M on the, on the left, we need an M on the right side, so we multiply the top and the bottom by M. We have an N on the left and an N on the right, so that's good. Now, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, the denominators are now identical. So let's go ahead and combine them back together. So we have on the left side 1 over 2 times 3, 6mn minus, on the right side we have 3m over 6mn. Okay, so just a side point, the lowest common divisor denominator here is 6mn. Okay, now that the denominator is identical, we'll just simply combine the numerator and keep the denominator the same following step number three that we have outlined on the side. So 6mn. Okay, so that's the final answer for question number two. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Really appreciate it. If you found the contents of this tutorial helpful in your study of rational um, expressions and operations on them, do give us a thumbs up. Your positive feedback is very valuable to us. If you have any questions or comments about the contents of this presentation, just place it in the comment section below. We'll be glad to hear from you and we'll gladly respond. If, do not forget to subscribe to our channel for updates to other tutorials such as this. More clips, tutorials, and support tools can be found on mathgodserve.com. Do visit our website. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.